Thanks for checking out this recommendation video. Um, yes, I just got done at the gym, so I look kind of sweaty and, you know, disheveled. There might be a nice shine of sweat on me, too, so you got to get out there and work out. But actually, tied to the whole working out thing, they've actually found that if people watch a horror movie, if you're not, like, super used to horror movies and you actually get scared, watching a hour and a half horror movie can be equivalent to doing about 30 minutes of cardio because it really gets your heart going and cardio is all about heartbeats and getting your blood pumping so uh just a fun fact so anyway this is a recommendation video like it says these are eight hidden gems currently on the shutter streaming service for horror i just wanted to do this real quick because i feel like a, I already wrote these down and I don't want them to cycle off by the time that I do this. And B, it's just good to know if you have Shudder or if you're interested in getting Shudder, kind of what stuff's out there that someone may have seen, in this case me, that you have not seen potentially. Or you, maybe you've seen it before, but you didn't know it was on Shudder and you'd like to rewatch it. So disclaimer on this, I haven't watched every movie and every show on Shudder. I've actually only watched a fraction, but of what I've seen or what I've seen off of Shudder but is on there right now, um, these are ones that I've identified as hidden gems. And when I say hidden gems, I'm leaving out movies that are like well known. You know, like I know there's a bunch of um, Dario Argento films on there at the moment, so I'm not going to include those. There's a bunch of like Stephen King stuff on there. I'm not going to include those because those aren't hidden gems. People know about them, they're very well known. So, number one on my list a very weird movie, but very interesting society. It is currently on Shutter. It is called Society. I had heard about this film before and then found out when I was just kind of scrolling through on my laptop what was available on Shutter, and I was like, Society's on here. I've heard interesting things. So it's like an 80s film about this kid who is living in kind of like a Hollywood situation, so he's, you know, well-to-do. At least the family he lives with is well-to-do, and he's um, he feels like there's something weird going on, like there's some sort of like secret society going on, and that's pretty much all I'm going to tell you about it. I'm not going to spoil anything about any of these. So that's all I'm going to tell you about that. But it's very 80s. It's very campy. It's, trust me, it's interesting. And when you get to the end, it is nuts. It is nuts. And there's really good practical effects in it. So check society out. Uh, the next one is Tourist Trap. Now this is one that's at, you can actually just watch it straight up. Or it was given the Joe Bob Briggs treatment as well. So you can watch it that way. Uh, you'd have to search by Joe Bob Briggs, though, and it's under his show. Um, I would just go for the Joe Bob because Joe Bob Briggs is great, and he always adds something extra, and you'll see the whole movie anyway with extra information. So this one's basically, as it kind of sounds like, tourist trap. Some, like, college kids get stranded on the side of the road. They find a tourist trap that's kind of abandoned. Some dude living there um, who's taking care of it who doesn't seem to really want people around. And then he maybe has like this brother who's kind of weird and uh, maybe has some sort of powers or something. But like I said, I'm not going to tell you anything. But it is out there. There's a lot of wacky stuff that happens in this film, but it's a lot of fun. And that's one of the big things. Like people start to understand, if you've seen some of these films, you'll start to understand my feeling of where where I like to go with horror films. And a lot of times it is either really, really good and really well written, or it's campy and just fun and wacky, and a lot of these movies are that. So Society is, and Tourist Trap is as well, so check out that. Another one in the same vein, Basket Case. I'm. This one's kind of borderline on the hidden gems, because I know a lot of people kind of do know about Basket Case, but on the other hand, I know a lot of people who know about Basket Case, but haven't watched Basket Case. So if you haven't, you've got to watch that. Basically about Siamese twins who are separated... I think at the age of 12, and one of them is normal, and the other one is ill-formed and is just basically thrown out thrown out in the garbage. Uh, but he is saved by his brother, and it's just kind of really about them trying to seek revenge on the people who were involved in the separation. So uh, it's terrible acting, but it's a lot of fun, and it's just so out there and ridiculous, but lot of fun so check that out also 80s all these are 80s uh thus far as is the next one and also wacky and over the top and crazy street trash okay this one is basically about a bunch of homeless individuals who uh keep going into this liquor store and like stealing booze from it and it just so happens that this one time uh, they found some weird booze that was 
like hidden in the basement somewhere. I think it was in like a crawl space or behind the wall. They accidentally find it and they take it and they and then some people try it and it makes you melt. But it doesn't just make you melt. It makes you melt in Technicolor, which is really visually appealing to be honest in this film which is kind of like the craziest thing the best scene is the very first melting i'll tell you that but um it just gets more like depraved and crazy after that and it's just like an over-the-top fun film so street trash also from the 80s uh the next one's actually a tv show that is from the early 2000s i think early to mid 2000s thus far uh, Todd and the Book of Pure Evil. Now, this is very much in the vein of, of like a horror comedy, and it's a series. It's not a, a movie. Um, if you like things like Jan Silent Bob, you know, Kevin Smith type stuff, uh, a lot of, um, you know, kind of bodily function humor and sex humor and stuff like that mixed with heavy metal, then you'd like this. Uh, I think it's really well written. There's two seasons on Shudder at the moment. I think it's extremely well written and it's very engaging. The overall story arc is pretty solid, but the each individual episode is just very, very funny and very well executed. And the jokes stay good, which is very interesting. Plus, the other thing is you're kind of like, the whole premise, I'll tell you the premise real quick, is that there's a book of pure evil that's in this high school, Crowley High School, and there's a group of kids who get together and decide they're going to try and stop this book from doing evil things. Well, whenever anyone gets the book, they let, kind of wish for something out of it, and then it goes totally wrong. I was very impressed with the fact that they were able to come up with so many different scenarios of who's going to get the book this time, what's affecting them, what are they going to wish for. They kept it fresh. So it's really good. It's really funny. It's a lot of fun. I recommend Todd and the Book of Pure Evil. The next one is a documentary that was from the 2000s, uh, but about a movie from the 80s. I love documentaries. Horror documentaries are even better because there's these really awesome kind of behind the scenes. And this one is one of the best I've seen, to be honest. It's called You're So Cool Brewster, and it is the behind the scenes kind of documentary of the making of the original Fright Night from the 80s. And um, man, the amount of information that they pack into this thing is awesome. It's like two hours, I think. And I had no idea, but a lot of the practical effects they were using in that film on set, they were pioneering it on set, and it was like cutting edge for its time. And some of it was dangerous, too. So some people got hurt, and it, it's nuts. But it's just really cool to like hear from the actors and actresses, find out you know what was going on on set, how everything came together. It is super cool. If, if you are a fan of the original Fright Night, it is a must. If you're just a fan of horror in general, it is also a must. You will appreciate it. It's very well put together. So that's You're So Cool, Brewster. My second to last one is um, The Reflecting Skin. Okay, this one's from the early 90s. And it has Viggo Mortensen in it, although he comes in kind of later on in it. And he's not like there immediately. I was kind of surprised to see him. I was like, oh, Viggo Mortensen. So The Reflecting Skin is messed up. Okay, it, this is one of the ones that it's not wacky, it's not campy. Although, well, there are some kind of like subtly wacky things in it that I like about it because some of the, the like the grown up characters are eccentric, kind of out there, not very realistic. But uh, the overall storyline and how the whole thing's played is very serious. It's very well written, it's very interesting, it's very messed up, it's very dark. But it's kind of set on a in a backdrop of kind of Midwest Midwest America that's just like plains and like farmland and everything, and it's kind of it's kind of a look at um, perceived danger versus real danger through the eyes of a child, and how that can end up happening. Of you know stories get to children, and those stories morph into what they think are dangers in their life and they kind of imbue those things with with uh, information and stories that aren't there and they think that's dangerous because it's this thing that they kind of made up in their head based off other stories they've been told and at the same time there's the actual danger in their life that they're not aware of because it seems normal to them and it's it's kind of really tough at times with some of the grossness of it 
uh, and just like the overall tone, but I think it's really well put together. And honestly, if I had more time when I was watching it, I wasn't lo watching it from like an analysis perspective, but if I was, I guarantee there's a lot to unpack there because I saw a lot of interesting imagery and this, I think this is definitely one I kind of want to go back to at some point and like really dig into it. But stylistically, it looks really good. Story-wise, it's great. Definitely check out the reflecting skin. It is surprisingly good. And then the last one I'm going to recommend is one that I think it's a 20... Since we just got into 2019, I can't recall if it's a 2018 release to Shudder or 2019. And I think it's a Shudder exclusive. It is called Summer of 84. Um... I've heard some people kind of talk about it, but not enough, so I kind of feel like it fits in the hidden gem category. But this is basically kind of like, think kind of a mixture of like It and The Goonies uh, and Stand By Me. So the, it's kids basically involved in it who, um, there are bodies going, I'm not, I was going to say bodies going missing. No, there are bodies that are hap, wait a second. No, I'm, I apologize. Some kids are disappearing in their neighborhood, much like in it. And they believe that there's someone who lives in the neighborhood who's a serial killer. And this is one of those things where they kind of keep you guessing, like, is this just the kids kind of like coming up with a story in their heads and they just want it to be that? And or is it really happening? I don't know. And they do a really good job of making you guess until the very end. And obviously, I'm not going to tell you what that ends up being, but there is some good humor to it, and there's really good feeling of, like, camaraderie amongst the kids in this group who's trying to, like, figure this whole thing out, and they feel real. Like, they feel like, they don't feel like they're characters. They feel like they're real-life people interacting with each other, and I think the story's really well-written. I think I like the ending, how they chose to do it, and uh, it's just a fun, interesting, good movie not campy, not wacky, not over the top. So um, there you go. That's kind of a range of eight, as I say, hidden gems on Shudder at the moment. So this is the moment where I'm going to say, please put some comments down here. And specifically, can you comment, if you have Shudder, uh, any Shudder films that I should be checking out that I've missed off this list uh, that you think are hidden gems on there? Because I will certainly write those down and I will certainly try and get to watching those um, so yeah, that would be awesome. Also, if you want to give a thumbs up, the other big thing is please, 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 if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscription up there, hit the notification bell. So you'll know whenever I put up a new video, uh, cause I would really appreciate that. Cause I want to keep growing things. I want to keep doing a lot of horror stuff on here. I actually submitted a uh, press request to shutter today, uh, cause they kind of put a form out there. If you want to get updates and information and stuff like that ahead of time, and I am interested in that because I'd like to be able to kind of let people know what's happening with Shudder. Because obviously I, I really like it. I don't have any affiliation. I'm just a fan. But anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.